Hello, I think I'm on. Push the button right and it starts, correct? Okay, so, um, all right, I, I am getting better at this, I really am. So, uh, I'm back. This is uh, part two of Paul Prison, the Pandemic and You. And there was something I left out, and it was a long video. I intended it to be like 11 minutes long, and it was 21 minutes long. Okay, so um, it, it, there were things I left out. Uh, you might have been wondering where were the scripture references, at least give you some scripture references, and I, I intended to do that. So uh, here they are, okay? So this is really easy if you want to check this out. So it's, the, it's Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, and it's the last chapter of Ephesians, chapter 6, and the first chapter of Philippians, and then the last chapter of Colossians. So how to remember that is um, when you say, go eat popcorn, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. That's how I remember those books. But it's not Galatians. It's Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. So it's the last chapter, the first chapter, and then the last chapter. Okay. So um, so if you want to turn with me, you don't have to. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna go through this rather fast, but it would be good if you did. Okay. So let's look at Ephesians first. And it's the last chapter, and it's verses 18, 19, and 20. So we're going to read this, because we talked about uh, these questions. What, what are your prayers like during this time? And also, um, you know, what is the outcome of what you're doing? What is your attitude? These, these questions will, will be answered here in these verses, in, in these scripture references. Okay, so reading from verse 18. Paul is um, writing, again, he's writing from prison, and um, this is the verse. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication and the Spirit being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So notice something. Um, you know, Paul was either in prison or then again in Rome for a while. He he's he was in a, quite a while. He was in house arrest, and um, he doesn't say, "Pray that I could be set free." Uh, his prayer was rather that he could share the gospel, and um, and you might ask, "Well, gee, Paul, isn't that why you're in prison? Why would you want to do that? Don't you want to get out?" You know. So, but, so that was what Paul did, but his prayers were, and, and he was asking, actually asking other people to pray for each other, and then pray with me, for me as well. I pray for all the saints and pray for me uh, that I may open my mouth to speak boldly uh, the gospel. It, it, that's really, it is amazing. And he says, that's why I'm in here. So you're in there and you want to pray to do it more. Okay, so that's, that's what Paul did. Um, so that's what his prayers were like. And then in Philippians, you just flip the page over. You should be in Philippians chapter 1, verses 12, 13, and 14, and 18, okay. Uh, he says, let's talk about the outcome here. Um, so the outcome is this. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. So uh, what he's saying is that by me be, being in here, it's furthered the gospel. So we might ask, well, gee, that's the outcome, okay. But how, Paul? How did that further the gospel? Well, he goes on to say, so that, in verse 13, he says, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and all the rest that my chains are in Christ. So that was, you might say, the kind of the start of it there. Everybody knows why I'm in here. I'm in here because of Jesus Christ. And then he says, okay, so that was kind of how furthering the gospel right there. And then 14, um, and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become more, more confident by my ch chains, are, more, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So because he's in prison, others have become bolder to speak the gospel. That is amazing, but that is the way it works. 
So uh, that was verse 14. And if you, so what was his attitude about this here? Well, in verse 18, he says, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice and will rejoice. That was his attitude. Um, again, not praying to be freed, actually, as almost an afterthought in the following verse, um, verse 19, he says, for, the, for I know this, that, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Um, he knows that he's good, the, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the supply of the Holy Spirit is going to be there, and, he, and he's confident already that you're praying for my deliverance, okay, and that that will happen. But that's not, that wasn't first on his list. So, wonderful passage when you think about that. Uh, that was his attitude. And um, so what is our attitude during this time uh, was the question. Uh, and then the last chapter of Colossians, I really like this, only two verses. Uh, chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. It says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving, meanwhile praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ. So he's saying, uh, praying, but praying for us also, that God would open a door, that uh, that the mystery of Christ for which I am in, in, also in, in chains, that I may, excuse me, that I may speak it, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Thank you. Excuse me. So uh, basically, what he's saying here, he's asking for prayer. He's He's talking about being vigilant and, and praying with thanksgiving. But he says, pray for me also. Pray for us also. Uh, that God will open a door for the word to be, to be spoken. Okay, so he's not saying that the prison gates would be open so I could leave. Um, that they would set me free. But rather that instead of a door open for me to leave, that a door would open so we could preach the gospel. Basically is what he's saying. By the way, and he mentions that, that is why I'm in here in the first place. So you would think that you know, somebody may be thinking, gee, Paul, that's why you're in there. Are you sure that's what you want us to pray for? But absolutely, that is what he wanted uh, people to pray for. And that's, what the, that's the attitude we should have. And, and uh, you remember we talked about the outcome, uh, going back to Philippians, we talked about that he actually started a church when he was um, when he was while he was in prison, and um, we're going to go back to Colossians, the I'm sorry Philippians, the last book in Philippians, where he ends it by saying, "All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household." So those are the passages, and we already talked about uh, his attitude when Paul and Silas when they were both in prison singing hymns and praying. And because of that testimony um, that, well, the, the jailer was um, saved. Um, there's a story that goes with that. You need to find that out. It's in Acts 16. Uh, Ray said you should, you should read that. So those are the passages, and I wanted to make sure that you got those. And maybe you followed along. Just a little encouragement. It kind of tells us what we should be doing, uh, what our attitude should be, and and the, what the outcome can be, too. God is going to use everything that, every um, circumstance in your life, circumstances, good and bad, uh, will present themselves. But what happens also is that opportunities present themselves as well. Uh, God will make sure of that. So, all right. God bless you guys again.